So at this house, I'm up on the roof. I've got some solar panels mounted. All the electrical wires are going to go off that side down to the electrical panel. Um, this roof has been replaced not that long ago. We can tell by the motor caps. Um, but the flashing that they put on, they just sporadically sprayed it. We really want to see this, this covered. The last thing we want to see is this rust. and leave rust stains going down the, the concrete tiles. But the roof service in general looks really good. Uh, basically tell them by the mortar caps. These wear out after a few years. Alright, so now we're going to get up into the main attic space. The large attic space, I should say. A little knee wall right in front of us. Got some fiberglass insulation. A little barrier put up so they could use this area for storage. Um, but my main concern is going to be up there where the water damage was on the outside. You can see some of the soffit venting is not looking too good up there. So let's get a closer look. So this is water damage sheathing, water damage soffit vent. All of this is absorbed water. All that wood is in need of a replacement because it's bowing. If it was just water stained, just water stained. But the garage smells like, it smells like mold. Oh yeah. I see a hole starting to form in the sheathing right there. Where this is probably a past one because it's got new felt uh, or new underlayment underneath it. This is an old sheathing hole. Okay, moving on. Get one up here. Got blown in cellulose insulation up here. Covering the rafters, it's a good sign. I uh, got an attic fan up top. Okay. Okay. Now let's work our way into the rest of the attic. We got some black staining up on the roof cords. Truss members. Previous leak damage over there as well. See back in those corners, lots of water damage from the front side of the garage. Oh, this is that vaulted space. Let's see if I can get up there. Fiberglass bat insulation all the way over this vaulted area. They tore open that sheathing to get up to the front there. Oh, that makes me curious. I don't want to fall through, but let's take a look. So this is right over the garage to the left side. This is just an empty space in the attic that's been blocked off from the rest of the attic. It's really hard to get to, but you can see all the water damage, the water evidence anyway. Take a couple pictures up here. So 
Looks like they tore into it to do repairs. <laughs> right, let's get back in here. This is exactly why we don't use duct tape in an attic. Feel that. <laughs> Listen to it. it. Feels dry, it's cracked. There's nothing holding that on anymore. It's just falling off. So this is where two pieces were put together. This eventually is gonna come apart. You're gonna have your bathroom venting right in your attic. More moisture problems. So over on this side, Well, I see a couple things. When they redid the roof, the mastic that they used to seal up that hole came through and this pipe got pulled back down. So it's not venting to the exterior anymore, it's venting to the attic space. You can see the mastic actually fell down on the attic floor. This roof was just replaced a couple years ago, I believe. But then over here, um, pretty good truss crack, the truss is split for a good, I don't know, six foot section, about a third of its strength is probably lost out of that. Unfortunately with trusses, they're engineered wood, or they're engineered um, structures, so they have to be approved by an actual engineer. Looking around back here, I see a little bit more of the black on the trusses, but no actual water damage. OSB sheathing. Most of it looks good. I wanted to show you guys one more thing. So when you're walking in your own attic or somebody else's attic, you always want to know what's below you, right? So you would think that there's sheetrock below this insulation, that if you step on it, you're gonna feel something, but you're gonna be like, okay, I probably shouldn't do that. But not here. This is open cavity down to the air conditioning space. All this black stuff building up on the air filter, that's basically working like a, I mean, all the black stuff building up on the insulation is making the insulation work like an air filter. Alright, so we're going to go up in this small attic space in the master bedroom closet. This is going to be where the air handler is. Take a look at it. It's cold in here. Usually means there's a leak. I can feel just super cold in here. Hmm. So that's where they tied into the old rigid ducts. Drop it down in there. It's interesting that this is a cold space because when cold and hot mix, we get condensation. Kind of like what we see on the attic access cover. And the black staining that we saw up on the top in the other attic.
That's right. Flexible duct goes into the old rigid ductwork right there. And all this insulation up on top is, uh, there's not supported. It's just pushed in between the rafters. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be down here. It's supposed to be on the, on the attic ceiling or the, the attic floor. This being a cold space and then the really hot space right above it in the other attic can create con condensation. You've got some problems. things to show you today at this house first thing in the front when I pulled up I saw the deteriorated soffit fence that vent right there got soaked with water we had some roof leaks you can see on the inside of the house there or inside of the attic how bad it really is you can see the stucco actually bowed out because of all the moisture inside of it so the roof leak originated about three feet up, not on the edge here. It was a hole about three feet up. On the These don't look too bad. This one's got a little bit of damage to it. You can tell. You can see everything is bowed out from the moisture, the trim. But of course, walking around the back side of the property, we get here and of course that latch isn't working right but the water heater is off so when a circuit breaker is off in the control panel and the main service panel I can't turn it on the home inspector doesn't have the authority nor do I have the okay from the homeowner to turn this on I'd love to to be able to test the water heater but without an okay from the listing agent I can't touch it 200 amp service there's a couple issues in the electrical panel but I'm not gonna pull it off right now yeah, you can see this latch <laughs> needs a little attention. Um, got an updated irrigation control panel. I've got the same one at my house. Touch screen, Wi-Fi built into it. Can control up to six zones. It's really nice. Really nice as long as you have Wi-Fi. Um, another thing I note around the perimeter is termite treatment. So these are drill and fill marks made by a termite treatment company that will drill down through the concrete and put termite uh, termite aside um, whatever chemical that they're going to be using to try and kill the termites so looking up at the roof now the roof was replaced it doesn't look bad the surface of the roof doesn't look bad but we've got some movement over here on the patio um, i don't know if you can see that up there but it's actually moved moved from the original place it was in it's shifted down so this whole patio surface is actually dropped see that fastener used to be connected to both boards it's not anymore this whole patio surface is shifted but they didn't correct it when they did the roof they just roofed over the top of it patio itself doesn't look bad but when they built it um, now we're recommending that the stucco be cut up at least two three inches so we can see the concrete around there um, termites can get behind that concrete and tunnel all the way up in your attic and into your house and cause some major issues so more soffit vent damage from water no, the rain gutter isn't quite level. I didn't see any debris in it today, but we definitely need to extend it away from that slab. We get water dropping right there. We're going to have slab issues. I want to see it terminate six feet from the foundation, from the property, from the home. Sunshade up at the back door, and we're missing a lot of screens on the windows. Some of them have screens, but that one doesn't. So we're checking the window quality, looking at the seals, looking for damage. This is completely shot. All the seals and leather stripping around the windows on this house have got to be replaced or the windows should just be replaced. You can see how bad these are getting. 
This is on the south side of the house. These are just going to get tortured day in and day out by the sun. That window's got the same business going on. Down at the foundation, you can see some of the paint is starting to pull away from the foundation. And what happens is water gets underneath the foundation wall, wicks up into the concrete, and then when it dissipates, it makes the paint fall off. So the paint just crumbles. This house was not built in the 70s, so we're not worried about lead-based paint, but we are worried about the foundation getting more moisture in it. All those little concrete patches, those are from termite treatment again. I don't like how they have stuff, that concrete tile in that flashing right there. It's not a good thing. We don't want anything that's going to build up debris in the flashing that's going to decrease the roof's um, function. It's going to take away from the drainage at the roof. And the east side of the house doesn't look too bad. Nothing going on, we're missing a screen again, but again, looking at the windows. Some definite issues with the windows on this property. The original. Carrier unit, three and a half ton from 2003. Actually sounds pretty good. It's, it's an older unit, it's been repaired a few times. But one thing that I'm noting today is the missing insulation on the condensate line. The pad isn't 100% level. We can see that it's settled a little bit towards the home. That's not a major concern. We usually don't recommend um, fixing that until they update the AC, unless it's really bad. All this wood along the side of your home shouldn't be there. Turn lights up. Love that stuff. Gable vent up at the roof. So we've got gable vents and soffit vents in this house. Venting. Condensate drain for the AC coming out on a PVC pipe. It's okay that it doesn't terminate right next to the wall. The farther away we get it from the foundation, the better. Um, but we want to make sure that it terminates above ground, not below ground. If it terminates below ground, termites will follow that tube all the way back into your house. Um, backflow preventers for the irrigation system. We don't do an irrigation system check, but we do know where they're at and if they look good or if they look like they're in need of replacement these have got some age to them i'm um, going to recommend servicing by the irrigation company i don't know if it's working i don't test it the irrigation controller actually said no, no wi-fi it won't let me manually turn it on more damage to the fascia you can see they didn't quite finish painting the fascia either they just did the bottom two-thirds of it so they didn't even remove that ridge tile when they painted flashing sticking up at the corner that doesn't look good then the main water valve is a wrench I don't know what's going on there um, I suppose it makes it a little easier to open and close with, with a wrench on it but it's not that bad to turn off and typically the this valve over here will go down to the irrigation system this is coming up from the main main water supply this will go down to the irrigation system now you can turn your whole house off like we have right now if you're leaving but leave your irrigation system turned on put the wrench back where it needs to go got some birds roosting up on the top of the columns see that quite a bit up on these taller columns but some stucco repairs stuck a hole that needs to be patched another stuck a hole up on top that needs to be patched and we've got main plumbing cleanouts over here on the side I'm gonna see we didn't have any drainage issues on the inside of the house but any house over about 20 years old it's not a bad idea to have a, a sewer cam put in I've got one in the trunk of my car um, I could do it as long as the client wants me to but over on the driveway, you can see the black staining from roof runoff. So when it rains, all that water is going to drop here. And it's making the area black. You can put a gutter on and get that water over to the side and over. Now the problem with that is you're going to have to walk over the gutter at the corner, but you're going to get rid of all the moisture in the driveway. Let's go inside.
All right, so the inside of the house, a little hole in the wall. Nothing crazy going on, but we do have some cracking up at the ceiling. This is actually associated with a structural issue I have with a truss up in the attic. There's some movement going on in the truss work over in that area and should be replaced or repaired. Um, the truss first and then the attic or the ceiling. This house really reminds me of my grandma's house growing up. Doesn't look anything like it, but just has that feel, you know, the blue walls, there's a pink room back there. It's a pretty cool house. It's got a little bit of class to it. Bright blue kitchen. Appliances are working fine, got the dishwasher running. Everything underneath the sink looked okay. Now they did replace the base underneath here. Water damage at one point in time. Probably from an RO system leaking. Now we've got a little bit of the evidence back there. But they do have a leak controller installed now. I can't verify if it's working or not, but um, you could have that checked. Now, the last time this thing has obviously been serviced is 2017, so we're going to recommend that the RO system gets serviced. Garbage disposal is working fine. No issues with that today. Microwave is mounted a little bit too close to the stovetop there. We like to get ventilation out, but what they did is they removed the vent that actually goes out the roof. Now they've got it venting back inside and they put such a big microwave in here. This was possibly just a vent hood when it was original. So when you put a big microwave in like that, it drops it down a very large amount and it's not safe. It's not safe to put a microwave that close over your cooktop. There's actually holes in the wall back here from what they worked on. Let's take a look at that in a few minutes. Um, laundry, nothing crazy going on, but we don't have a vent. Just a window, which is okay. As long as it's got some type of ventilation. Now in the garage, looking over at the water heater. This wasn't fired up today, but it was serviced recently, 10 24 19, so that's two years ago. It's a little less recent than I thought. I thought it said 22, but that's 2019. Um, probably going to want to have it serviced again. The water heater itself is uh, from 2008. I'm sorry, 2004. It's 2004 model water heater. The, two, the AC is a 2003 model. Even on the back side of the water softener, we've got holes in the garage wall. Now, this is a fire barrier wall. We can't have holes in it like that. Those holes have got to be replaced or repaired. Above the laundry sink, we've got a couple water stains. Not quite sure what they're from, but that's moisture staining. We did have a little bit of attic leaks upstairs. Well, the main concern in here is it's really musty. I can really smell must mold. And this is from the leaks that are above the garage up in the attic on the soffit vents. There, we've got a couple spots in the ceiling here. I think the majority of the leak was over here and over there, both sides of the garage. This is actually enough mold that it's making it hard to breathe in the garage. I would get it repaired and replaced. Another thing with the fire barrier wall, you can't have plastic pipe going through a fire barrier wall. It's actually got to be a metal pipe. We've got to seal that hole off there. You want to give yourself time to get out of the house if it starts on fire. And the number one place for a fire to start is your garage. Now the floor itself, covered in tile. We're not going to be able to see it below it. It's just a stick on vinyl tile. So there could be a little bit of cracking. I, I don't see anything specific today but there could be some cracking under here that we weren't able to see. Now the garage door over here has got a little bit of a dent in it. Garage door here has got a little bit of a dent in it. Both doors seem to open just fine. Like to see covers on top of the fluorescent light. So if you come in here with a broom and you hit one of those light bulbs, it doesn't rain down glass on your head. Yeah. 
This is actually behind the stove. This is what they cut out. It's part of a vent back there that's been terminated. It's not being used anymore. This, this ventilation system used to go up and out the attic and it does not anymore. They eliminated it and they just have it venting back into the house now. The blue room. More cracks. A little bit more cracking up on the ceiling. A couple areas. AC is doing great today, dropping about 22 degrees. Off to the primary bedroom, <clears throat> the pink bedroom. This is a three-way outlet that's attached to one of the switches by the door of the bedroom that you can turn on and off. You can turn the lamp on and off in this corner if you would choose to do so. Bathroom, no major issues today. Missing a drain stop. Missing a little bit of caulking around the bathtub. Nothing crazy, shower was fine, toilet worked good. There's your other attic hatch that goes up to your HVAC system in the attic. Then walk into the other bedrooms. Thermostat working good today, drop the temperature nicely. Another bathtub, we always check the shower head before I turn it on. And this has got a lot of movement to it. Even the handle has got a lot of movement to it. This is something I want to fix because I don't know what the copper pipe looks like in the back of the wall. It's, it's loose, obviously, but the more it moves, the more it has a chance to break. I know this from personal experience in my own house. It does break eventually. Toilet and sink, no major issues with those, working good. This is the front of the house where we've had some more water leaks. Up in this corner, you can see all the discoloration, water damage. been a decent amount of water damage in the in the house and even up in the corner of the closet you can see some of that it's actually coming down found quite a bit of damage today pretty cool house but needs some attention hopefully my clients are gonna be um, here within a half hour we'll go through all this stuff and see how they feel about it as long as they get it for the right price any house is, is a cool house any house is a good buy if you get it at the right price and you get it inspected and you know what it's going to cost to get it into good condition or the condition that you want it in. I'm Home Inspector Dan. We'll see you next time.